The Abbott portfolio of MR conditional high voltage devices continues to expand and now includes the next generation high voltage devices, including Gallant and Intron ICDs and CRTDs. Please reference the MRI ready IFU from medical.abbott forward slash manuals for the devices and models applicable to your geography. It is required to program the device to MRI settings as part of the MRI scan workflow. This video will review how to program MRI settings, noting key differences in this device platform as compared to previous high voltage devices. Abbott's next generation high voltage devices, including Galant and Entron ICDs and CRTDs, are approved for full body MRI scans using a 1.5 Tesla or 3 Tesla scanner. For more information about Abbott MR conditional systems, navigate to medical.abbott forward slash manuals and select healthcare professionals from the homepage. Select the continent and then the country where the product was sold. Optionally, select sort by one or more preferred language and then select the checkbox next to your desired language. Select continue. Type MRI ready in the search by product field and select search. Alternatively, type in the model number of the product you are interrogating and select search. Select the MRI ready systems manual from the search results and download it for details on MR conditional models device and lead configurations, and lead links, as well as more procedural information regarding Abbott's MR conditional systems. It is important to note the following about MRI settings in Abbott's ICDs and CRTDs. When MRI settings are enabled, tachycardia therapy is disabled, meaning the patient will receive no therapeutic treatment for ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation. Following the scan, MRI settings must be disabled such that the device can return to permanently programmed settings and tachycardia therapy can be re-enabled. For next generation high voltage platform devices, including the Gallant and Entrant ICDs and CRTDs, there is an optional programmable MRI timeout option, which will automatically return the device to regular program settings after a set period of time has elapsed. We will discuss this in further detail when we review the MRI programming steps. While MRI settings are programmed, the patient notifier, which is auditory in next generation high voltage devices, is disabled. Functionality will be restored after MRI scan is complete and MRI settings are exited. Lastly, in contrast to previous high voltage platforms, the Gallant CRTD allows for simultaneous biventricular pacing when MRI settings are enabled. To set up the device for MRI and enable MRI settings on a next generation high voltage MR conditional system, following the initial interrogation of the device, select the parameters menu and then select the MRI settings tab. There are multiple steps in the MRI programming workflow before the device is in the MRI settings, active state, and thus are ready to undergo an MRI scan. The first step on the MRI settings tab for the next generation high voltage systems is to make a selection for the MRI timeout feature by pressing the green set MRI timeout button. The programming options for MRI timeout can be seen on the screen with six hours being the nominal setting. Note that the device will stay in MRI settings from the time program MRI settings is pressed until the MRI timeout expires. It is important to note that a value for MRI timeout is required to be selected prior to permanently programming the device to MRI settings. If no MRI timeout is desired, choose the setting option of off. It is important to remember that a patient will not receive any tachycardia therapy as long as the device remains in MRI settings. Even if an MRI timeout duration is chosen, it is recommended that the patient's device is interrogated following the completion of the scan so that they can be put back into permanently programmed settings and therapy can be re-enabled. Once a setting for this parameter is chosen, click the set MRI timeout button to continue. Next, on the MRI settings menu, all of the available pacing parameters for programming are visible. The first MRI pacing parameter to address is the pacing mode. For an ICD, the nominal pacing mode is pacing off. If pacing is required, the following asynchronous pacing modes are available. For a CRTD, the nominal pacing mode is DOO. The same pacing modes available in an ICD are also available for CRTDs. If a pacing mode is selected, MRI base rate, MRI paced AV delay, and MRI pulse amplitude parameters may be adjusted as appropriate for the patient. For RA and RV lead positions, the MRI pulse width and MRI pulse configuration are not programmable. The nominal setting for MRI V pacing chamber is always RV only. For some CRT devices, MRI V pacing chamber is a programmable parameter with the ventricular pacing options of either RV only or simultaneous biventricular pacing. When MRI pacing parameters are being selected, 
determine whether or not pacing support is needed during the MRI scan. When pacing support is needed, set the MRI mode to an asynchronous pacing mode. When pacing support is not needed, set the MRI mode to pacing off. Some patients may be susceptible to cardiac arrhythmias induced by competitive pacing. When an asynchronous MRI mode is selected for these patients, it is important to select an appropriate MRI pacing rate to avoid competitive pacing and then minimize the duration of the asynchronous pacing operation. The MRI pacing parameters may be tested by pressing the test MRI settings button. Temporary pacing is now in effect. Adjustments may be made to the parameters during this temporary test. Once confirmed that the chosen MRI pacing parameters are appropriate for the patient, press cancel test to proceed. After selecting and testing the MRI pacing parameters, the next step is to select the high voltage lead type implanted, dual coil or single coil. It is important to select the correct lead type, which may be different than the lead configuration. Confirm the implanted lead type. If the implanted lead type is a dual coil lead, but the SVC coil has been turned off, dual coil would still need to be selected as the lead type. This will ensure that the high voltage lead impedance test is performed correctly during MRI setup. High voltage lead impedance tests are an important system integrity check as part of the MRI setup process. Lead fractures or other damages to the leads may cause changes in the electrical properties of the system that makes the system unsafe for an MRI scan. Patients with damaged leads may be harmed if an MRI scan is performed. Now that all parameters for MRI settings have been chosen, click the Save MRI Settings button to proceed. This will activate the Setup for MRI Now button. Pressing this button is the next step required to set up a next generation high voltage device for MRI. The following message will display to confirm that the chosen MRI pacing mode is appropriate. As a reminder, if you selected pacing off, the patient may not be supported. If you selected asynchronous pacing, pacing may be prorhythmic, regardless of the program permanent pacing mode. Since events are ignored by the device, press continue to confirm that MRI pacing mode is appropriate. The following tests will now be performed automatically as part of the MRI setup. Lead impedance will test for all implanted leads. The prepare capacitor test will discharge the capacitor. Press continue to proceed. Markers will indicate the status of the ongoing tests. Once complete, the MRI checklist is displayed. The following conditions must be verified before MRI settings can be enabled. Capture thresholds are stable at 2.5 volts or below at a pulse width of 0.5 milliseconds for RA and RV and at 2.0 volts or below at a pulse width of 0.5 milliseconds for the LV lead. Pacing lead impedances are within range, high voltage tests are performed and within range, and leads are approved for MRI, and no additional cardiac hardware such as adapters, extenders, or abandoned leads are present. Once the capture thresholds have been verified, check the box on the left side of the MRI checklist. To view the pacing lead impedance trend or update the impedance measurement, tap on a within range box and press update values to perform a new impedance measurement. The MRI high voltage tests are also performed automatically. To view the tests, press the high voltage test box. If the capacitor has already been prepared, the button will be grayed out. All of the high voltage lead impedance measurements will also be displayed. If any are out of range, check the upper and lower limits located in the lower right corner. The final step is to verify that the leads are approved for MRI and that no additional cardiac hardware is present, such as adapters, extenders, or abandoned leads. Each implanted lead type will need to be checked for MRI conditionality. Note that not all device and lead combinations are MR conditional. The MRI Ready Systems Manual contains a list of device and lead combinations that are safe for use in the MRI environment. Implanted lead models and links can be retrieved from the patient records or stored in the device, viewable on the patient data screen. Once the final box is checked, the Program MRI Settings button is enabled. Review the MRI settings one more time located on the right side of the checklist. As a reminder, all of the safe scanning conditions are found in the MRI procedure information and medical.abbott forward slash manuals. Press program MRI settings to proceed. The device will now be programmed to MRI settings, and if an MRI timeout was chosen, that clock will start as soon as program MRI settings is pressed. MRI settings is now enabled. Tachycardia therapy is disabled while the device is in MRI settings. It is recommended to print the MRI report for confirmation that the device is programmed to MRI settings, and the MRI clinician may ask for this evidence. To do this, press Print MRI Report. Finally, press End Session to end the interrogation session with the device. As a reminder, ICD or CRTD patients must be hemodynamically monitored while MRI settings are programmed, and an external defibrillator must be available. 
As soon as the MRI scan is complete, re-interrogate the device to disable MRI settings and return to permanent settings. If an MRI timeout was chosen, the device will automatically revert back to permanently programmed settings once the MRI timeout clock expires. However, it is always a recommended best practice to re-interrogate the device following the scan to avoid keeping the patient in an unprotected state for longer than necessary. Upon interrogation, the MRI settings active window will be displayed. Press disable MRI settings to return the device to the permanent settings and re-enable tachycardia therapy. It is important to note that it is necessary to proceed through every step in this process in order for the device to accurately switch into MRI settings. An MRI timeout selection must be set, even if the chosen setting is off. Pacing parameters must be chosen and tested. The correct high voltage lead type must be selected and the MRI settings must be saved. This then activates the setup for MRI now button, which will run the device through automated tests to ensure system integrity. After assessing all factors of the MRI checklist and reviewing chosen MRI parameters, program MRI settings can then be pressed. It is only then that the device will switch into MRI settings. It is important to print the MRI reports for the MR technologist or radiology technician before ending session with the device. Following the scan, the device should be interrogated immediately to disable MRI settings and revert back to permanently programmed settings, including enabling tachycardia therapy. For further information on MRI safety, please refer to the MRI Ready Systems Manual available on medical.abbott forward slash manuals.